Welcome back everyone to Git with Visual Studio 2013. And as you've seen, a lot of Git as well. So um, James, we're gonna talk about branching. We yep. talked about this commit thing before we got started. Mm -hmm. Everyone that's back from lunch, and this might have been a bad time to put this particular one yeah, because- This is very, very important. This is, this is the hardcore piece. So yep. um, the branching piece, Pay attention for the next bit really closely. It's gonna be, it's pretty important for seeing how branches behave differently. Let's go to the slides and let's dive right into branches. Yeah, sounds great. So what is a branch? So when we think about a branch in Git, um, the thing to remember most about it is it's literally just a lightweight movable pointer to a commit. And what I mean by that is if we look at the diagram on the slides and we look at each one of those commits, right? You can imagine each one of those commits is 98C89, uh, 34AC2. Those are the hashes for the commits and those are all pointing to snapshots. Now move up into where we see master. Master is just pointing to a commit. So all you can think of a master as literally just a file that has the hash of the commit in it. In fact, you can actually dive into the Git repository, open up that .git folder, and there's a branches folder that just has a very tiny file that, that's the name of the file is the branch, the, um, what the, the contents are just a hash. Yeah. I mean, a branch is just... It's literally just a file that has the hash of the commit in it. And that's it, that's all it is. There's nothing more than that. The hardest part about remembering this is just that you have to remember that a branch is literally just a file. Right? And when you think of branches in, in some of the other version control systems, they are literally a, a branch with a bunch of, it's another folder or another stream, something like that. Whereas in Git, it's literally just a file with 40 characters in it. <laughs> it's, a, yeah, it's just a pointer to a commit. Yeah. It really is. And that's the thing that blows your mind when you first start going to it. Because when, you're, when you check out other branches, all you're doing is you're just moving the working folder to point to a different commit. Mm -hmm. Basically taking that snapshot and putting it into the working folder. That's it. I, I, this is great for a demo, yep. but let's not do a demo yet. Not yet. Because I think there's We've more. We've got some more stuff. So, so how do you create a branch? Uh, I'll do this one because it's easy. Yeah. I'll let you handle the hard ones. Uh, <laughs> Git branch testing. Boom. Now you have a branch called testing. And all it's doing is pointing to the same commit as where you are. So if you're in master yep. and you create that branch, they both point to that same commit object. That's all it is. And then when you keep checking in, master will move, commit just stays there, unless you check out testing, yep. and then it will move when you do it. That's, 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 that's it. That's literally it, yeah. <laughs> Whichever branch you have checked out is the one that's gonna be moving when you do the commits. Yep. Yep, simple as that. It is, it's, it's very, very simple conceptually but blows your mind um, <laughs> from another way. And you'll see it more when we start changing branches inside of, of folders. Yeah. It's, it's brilliant and confusing all at the same time. Yeah, I, I, I think I, the hardest thing to remember if you're new to this is that a branch is just a file. And I think that yeah. multiple times where I'm like, oh, um, this doesn't make sense. But then when you think about it, it's just a file that you're pushing around. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> it is, just a file you're pushing around. Yep. So let's take a look back on the slide deck and we can take a look where we have testing. This created one. Now there's a special pointer called head. Mm -hmm. and what does head do? So when we think about head, head is literally where we are personally on our local machine. So right now we can see that we're, we have master checked out. So that's where head is pointing to. Head is going to be pointing to a branch if we're in a connected state, and we'll talk about an unconnected state. But if we were to say right. check out testing, the head would stop pointing at master and start pointing at testing. It's just a pointer to the local branch or what you have checked out. Um, most of the time you want to be working when you're working while your head's pointed at a branch rather than pointing at a commit. Um, and we'll talk about why that is later. Yeah. That's it. That's all head That's is. All it it's, is. Just a, it's just a special special branch. Um, if we look at how to switch branches, we use git checkout branch name. Yep. Uh, 
this is no different than any other type of version control system. You just, I want to check out something, except that we check things out inside the same directory. Yeah. We don't move directories like you do in TFVC or Subversion or something mm -hmm. like that. It's in the same directory. All it does is moves to what head is pointing at. Yeah. Yep. That's all mm -hmm. it is. And if it's if they're pointing at the same commit, it literally doesn't change anything. <laughs> yeah, that's true. In this example, they're all pointing at F30AB. Yep. Um, checking out the, the testing branch does nothing yep. it, to your directory. Except now, if you did a commit, you'd be moving the testing branch. The, the, yeah, you'd basically, it, what it would do was mo would modify the testing file, the testing branch file, yep. and change what commit it's pointing to. Just Absolutely. Change the hash in it. So back to slides again, and uh, we, here's the example. We commit, yeah. it just slides over one. Yep, just points at the new, at the new commit, and yeah. that's it. And that's all the branches are. And now master is a different version, but you can see what version it is. It's pointing to a unique snapshot, whereas testing is pointing at a different snapshot. So in Git, this idea of branches as snapshots, really just pointers to snapshots, is what differentiates it. We started this module, uh, the Git Fundamentals module, looking at the difference between a traditional version control system that doesn't do snapshots but does file versioning, and we looked at snapshots as a distinct mechanism. Now that we have these snapshots as distinct mechanisms, we get this. We get the ability yep. to just use uh, branches is just pointers. It's crazy. Yeah. And, and, and of course, again, in a demo, it kind of tends to highlight things. I'm, I'm looking forward to the demo. Yeah. <laughs> um, if we go back and we say git checkout master now, all it does is it moves the head to master. Mm -hmm. Head is simply where are we and what is head pointing to so that when we do a commit, that will be the, uh, <clears throat> that's, that's what gets moved. So head is pointing at master in this case. Mm -hmm. That's what gets moved. You can have a disconnected head. You referred to it a little bit, yeah. but we'll, we'll get to that. Yeah. And, and the second part it does when you check out master is it reverts the files to that snapshot. Basically takes that snapshot from the Git repository and pulls it into your working folder. And that's where you see the file changes when you check out different branches. Yep. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Now we commit to master. We have our first period of complexity. James, what happens when we commit to master? So when we committed to master, we can see that the, the history diverged, right? We're not in a straight line anymore. We're not connected to testing, uh, or we're not, we don't have testing checked out and we're not on that line. So when we, we push, brand, when, we, when we check out master and push a new commit, we now have divergence between the two um, because we have changes in testing that have not been, that master hasn't incorporated yet or vice versa, right? Master's commit hasn't been incorporated into testing's commit quite yet. Yep. Um, and that's where the histories diverge. If you remember when I was, I was doing the commit and trying to push to that public repository, Steve meddled and pushed something before me. Um, and since I was trying to push on master, I hadn't incorporated Steve's changes yet. And that's where, that's where the divergence occurs. Yep, that's exactly right, meddlesome me. <laughs> All right, this is it, a branch in Git. James said it well, it's just a file. And in this case, it's a simple file with a 40 character SHA-1 hash that just points to the commit. Where you're gonna see this, you gotta, gotta use it a while to get kind of that feel for it, but it's pretty powerful. Yep. There, because it's that one file, they are so cheap to create and destroy. And because they're just a pointer to history, they're not as dangerous potentially, although they can be, as a uh, version control, a branch in a centralized version control system where you might have work hanging out for long periods of time. Because in Git, they're so cheap to create and destroy, we create them and destroy them and create them and destroy them in very rapid succession. Mm -hmm. Maybe several branches a day quite often, depending yep. on your workflow. Yep. We'll talk about workflow in a bit. Mm -hmm. So Let's see it. Let's jump into it. James, pop to your machine and yep. show us some branching. Go ahead and jump over here. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do is just jump into my demo repository that I was working on just in my previous demos, right? So I'm just going to CD into that. And now we have, our, we have our master. And if we do our git log again, we can see the history here. Um, and I'm going to do one more thing. Basically, we, we had this question actually pop up at lunch is um, Git log has a ton of options with it. So yeah. I'm going to add some options here just so that we can visualize the commits as they have been thus far. Um, so Git log, um, one line, graph, uh, decorate, and all. 
And what that does is that puts my commits into a tree-like structure. So what we see here is um, we have origin master, uh, origin head, and master all pointing to this commit right here. Um, I also have a divergence here where I've added some added some some stuff to these other uh, to this other branch here. Nothing's pointing to it. Oh, I see. And 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 down here we have a couple another branch that came off and then and broke back in, right? So we get somewhat of a, a an ASCII character map of what's going on here, um, and that's the history. Is it worth showing Git K? Yes, totally. So another <clears throat> way to do this when you install Git, it brings in a tool called Git K. Um, so to use that, we just type in git k dash dash all. And what that does is that brings in that merge history and, and puts it in right here as well. So we can see that we have master, um, origin master, uh, uh, that sort of stuff. We have this remote slash origin slash master pointing to this commit. We'll talk about remotes later, um, but that's just basically a, another another file that's pointing to a commit. Um, the, the branches we actually have are this master one, and that's pointing to this commit right here. Right? Excellent. So um, what we're going to do here is we can say git branch, um, just to look at the different branches, we currently only have one branch locally. Um, so what I want to do is just create a new branch. So and just say issue 20. Oops. I accidentally put a space in there. <laughs> git branch issue 20. It created a branch, and now if we say git branch, we see issue 20. How do we get to that? We say git checkout issue 20. And just like that, we've switched to issue 20. Did you see how quick and fast and easy, lightweight that was? Really simple. <laughs> We're just moving a file. <laughs> yeah, that's it. So let's check something in here. Let's, let's make an edit and check something in here. So I'm just going to go ahead and say notepad uh, index.html. Uh, and let's go ahead and say, let's just remove this reference right here. Save what? it. That was our point to the Microsoft Virtual Academy. Okay, well. Yeah, get rid of it. I'm uh, okay with that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was just giving you a hard time. All right, so I saved it, and, and if we hit enter, we get our, we, we have an unstaged file, right? So I'm just going to go ahead and say git add index um, and git commit um, remove link right there we go it's been committed now um, now if we do get k all this is what it's going to show good and can and show us that other other one too oh, do get k all get k all and I'll, I'll do the other one as well so now what we can see is we also have this issue 20. That's just our file and our pointer pointing to this commit, right? And to look at this, we can see that each one of these little nodes here is a commit in and of itself. So master is right there pointing at that commit, and issue 20 is pointing at that commit, right? That's, that's essentially it. That's how branching occurs. So let's go ahead and say git checkout master again. Well, now we've checked out master, and we want to say uh, we want to look at index again. And we have that link back, right? It just Whoa. switches automatically for us. Now, again, let's let's check out issue twenty. Now we have to reload the file. <laughs> reload it, and the link's gone, right? So that's that's how you switch between the different branches. It literally just pulls the file, basically checks the files out of the repository and puts them into your working folder, right? Just right like that. Nice. Now. Let's, let's go back to master and check in and watch the history diverge when we do that. Okay. So git checkout master. And let's do notepad index. And this time what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a smiley face here. Excellent. Put that smiley face in. Again, hit enter so that posh git is, has the chance to, to analyze the, the working directory one more time. Um, let's go ahead and add that. And commit it. Okay, so one more time, let's open up git k dash all. And we can see now that the histories have diverged. Master is here, um, and it's going to be above issue 20 just because it's been checked. It was committed later, right? Um, but we can see that the histories are now diverging here between issue 20 and master. Really, really simple like that. That is.
Um, and let's jump back and let's run that that uh, git log graph. Just like that, just to see that here as well. So now we can see that both head and master are looking at this, this commit that master just checked in. We have issue 20 pointing at this commit and they are currently diverged just like that, right? So what if we check out master and do that or check out issue 20 and run that log one more time? Oops. Do that one more time and now head is, oops, I think I checked out master again instead of issue 20. <laughs> there we go. One more time, and now we can see that head has moved down here. So we can see that it actually has those branches, those pointers um, right there, so you can see where they're pointing to. Um, and they're denoted by, if, if it's a local branch, it's gonna be green. Um, your head's gonna be this turquoise teal color. Um, and then remotes, um, remote branches are gonna be in red. You have anything to add? Th that's, that's amazing. What I do want to add, I want to add some complexity to this thing. So yeah. can we go into issue 20 and make a change, James? Can you go in there and make an edit, but don't commit it? Okay. Like add a new file. Let's add a brand new file. Okay. Let's say uh, notepad. And just to do that, we can say notepad foo.txt. That sounds good. And that'll create the file for me. Yep. And you're in issue 20. Yep. yep. And give it something so that we got something we can open up and look at. There Hello. we go. Hey, just excellent. Call back to mind. Save it. Close it. Now, if we look at uh, uh, Git status, you're going to find out we've got an additional file in there. Yep. Now, what happens if we now go and check out master? Voila! This can blow your mind when you first start it because I did all this work in a different branch. Get dir in here just so people can see. And there is foo.txt in master. Yep. You're like, what's going on? Because what it's doing is if it's not staged, remember, we haven't, it's an untracked file. It's yep. currently an untracked file. Untracked files are ignored by Git. So if we have it untracked, it's, it's not going to do anything with it. It's not going to do it. anything with it. Yep. So if we potentially add it and track it and then move, we'd be in a different situation. Um, if you want to do something with it, like you're not quite sure, you can use git stash, and we'll get into that later, but git stash will throw that into a, its own little thing, package it up and take it away so that you don't see it. Then you can unstash it. Uh, what's cool about git is you can stash things in one branch and unstash them in another if you want later <laughs> on. So yep. yeah, got some cool stuff. Yep. Sweet. So, so I did want to show that. So any changes that you make in one area may not, I mean, if you don't, commit them, or you yep. don't stage them, they're just gonna stay there. They're gonna persist yep. between And this branches. is what we call a non-clean working directory, right? right. So this is, this, is, this is why we wanna keep our working directory clean is because when we switch branches, the, the behavior isn't always exactly, I mean, we can, we can predict yeah, close, it, but, but, but it's not always what we want. Yeah. <laughs> exactly, yeah. mm -hmm. exactly. All right, so that's the basics of branching. Now, is it worth going? We're not. We haven't done merging yet. Should I open up my pcoddle now to show some of the branching, or do we do we wait? Let, might as well open it up. I All mean, right. Let's, let's show it. Let's yeah. show it. Bring so it we'll back see. to me then, yeah. if you would. And I'm going to go into um, something called uh, uh, learngitbranching.com. Up here at the top, it's uh, pcoddle.github.io. Learn git branching, and I've got no demo written in here. Let me uh, let me just uh, reset this get us back to something normal and uh, not clean, uh, clear. clear, thank you. Clear just to clean that up a bit. Now, what we're going to do is take a look visually at what this might look like. You see we've got this basic stuff, commit zero, commit one, master is pointing to commit one, that's our active branch, and if you look up in the upper right, there's a little asterisk, that defines head. So master is currently what we're working on. If I do a git commit, dash m foo, I don't actually have to type in anything here. You'll see that master moved down one. Master is now pointing to the commit, commit two. If I do now a git, uh, what did you use, git branch issue 20? Yeah. I'm gonna use uh, git branch uh, bug 30, okay? There's my bug 30 branch, yeah, same yeah. thing. And now bug 30 is the branch that's created, however, it is not head. 
Yeah. So, so notice it, there's the, the the little asterisk on the on the master is what we consider head. It's exactly. what's checked out. It's what head's pointing to. So now if I do a commit, master moves, bug stays. Mm -hmm. And I can do another um, git commit, like we did here, and then I can do a git uh, git checkout bug 30. There I'm back. Yep. And if I commit on this, we can see these divergence of the history. Yep. Just like that. Just like that. That's how these things kind of evolve. And you can, you can create, I can do another like git checkout master, and then git branch bar, checkout bar, git checkout, get, get checkout bar, git commit, and now bar is the one moving ahead. I can move back to master. Remember, master is just a pointer. Yep, just a pointer to a commit. So basically, when you say checkout master, I'm just going to say I want to I want to get that commit and start editing that commit instead. Hey, I'm going to throw some. I'm going to throw a wild a wild card into this. I did a git merge bar. That's a fast way to move master all the way to bar. Now, we haven't talked about merges yeah, yet. We'll We're going to get there. But I did want to just kind of throw that in there as an introduction as we go back to the PowerPoints to our next piece. Yeah, which is merging. And this <clears> is where I think branching becomes really, really powerful. Um, it, it is because of it, the branching in Git is just because they're just files pointing to different commits. You can get things such as fast forward merges and that sort of stuff. Yeah. Right. And and we'll go into what that means. But I I really find that this is where the power of um, the branch as just a pointer. Uh, yeah. Really it's just comes, this amazing thing. Yeah. Uh, it, uh, I keep saying amazing thing. I'm asserting a lot. And, and <laughs> granted, you're going to have to see the amazing stuff as it evolves. Let's yes. let's yes. evolve it and talk about some basic branching. Here's our hot fix scenario. Right. We do some work on a website. We're going to create a branch for that story, do a bunch of work on the branch. Yep. Oh my goodness, critical hotfix, got to do it. We're in the middle of coding on that story, and now we've got this hotfix we've got to deal with. So we have to go out, fix the hotfix. So we're going to have to get back to master, mm -hmm. get back to known good code, yep. get back there, work a little bit on the, on the hotfix, get it checked in, yep. and then come back to the original story and continue. Mm -hmm. Here's what it looks like. And then we're going to see it when James will actually do a demo yep. when we'll have a hot fix on our website. Mm -hmm. So we already have a few commits here. C0, C1, C2. There's master. We check out our new story. We're going to create a story. Check it out. Um, there it is. You can see head, the little star there. Head's pointing to the story. And we're going to start working on our story. Well, all of a sudden, we get a bug. Whoops. We get a bug, and we got to go back. So in order to fix the bug, we need to get back to master. So we check out master because we're not yet ready to push our story to production. We're going to need to get back and fix our bug. So let's pop back to master, get the bug fixed, take another branch called hotfix. We don't want to pollute master. Yep. I mean, we could do it in theory right on master, mm -hmm. couldn't we? Yep. But we don't really want to do that. Instead, we're going to create a new branch called hotfix and check it out. Now, what happened here? There's a git checkout dash b hotfix. James? So this is kind of a, a shortcut into creating a branch <clears throat> while checking the branch out, out at the same time. So dash b is a switch as part of checkout, which just says create this branch and then check the branch out. Um, and that's just, that's all it is. It's nothing super magical. Uh, it just creates the file, just creates the branch that points to a commit, just, a, just like normal, and then it checks it out. That's, that's awesome. It, it, it shortens things up. And I love it, <laughs> and I, I, I extra love it, because I want to jump in and say, you can see from git what is important here. git checkout dash b. It's not git branch dash c. In other words, the important thing that we're doing is this checkout operation. Branching is so trivially done in git that it's just a shortcut passed in to a <laughs> checkout command. Yep. The mindset is radically different. If you were in Team Foundation version control or another centralized version control system where branches are very heavyweight style operations, it would be nothing like this at all. It would be, you know, TFVC or TF space branch, 
I'm, I'm, yeah, branch dash C. You know, yeah. I want to branch and check out. Just the focus would be on the branching operation. Here in Git, the standard is eh. Branches are cheap. They're just a file. <laughs> Do the checkout operation, which is the kind of the more important thing. Yeah. I, 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 no, I, totally I love it. Agree. It's just kind yeah, of a yeah. weird thing, but, yeah. but just those dis design decisions show how lightweight branches are. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's crazy. <laughs> All right, back to creating that hot fix branch. We're on our hot fix, yeah, hot fix branch. Hot fix. We make a commit. Now we got C4. We're starting to get this divergent history, and now we like it. What do we do? Go back, check out master, and merge it to hotfix. Merge hotfixes changes into master. Into master, but we have to check out master. Yep. So you're, you're on master. You, when you use a merge, you, the, what you are on is the thing that you are moving. So we're on master, and we want to get to hotfix, so we merge hotfix. So yep. we go to master, merge hotfix, we pull to hotfix. Mm -hmm. and, and something to note here, and I want to mention it now, is that we saw it with the with the with the demo Steve just did in Pcoddle, which is because Hotfix is directly downstream and there's no no divergence between master and Hotfix. It's literally one commit away. It does what we call a fast forward merge, which is all right. There's nothing to be merged. We just move it from one point one. We we move the pointer from pointing from one commit to the next commit, and that's it. I no know, merges occur, and it just moves the. It just changes what what commit the pointer is pointing to. It's just a linear path, so it just. Zip, just, yep. uh, yeah, it just opens up that file and sticks in a new SHA-1 hash. Yep, and that's, that's all it, it is. It's fast forward merge. Yep. yep. Excellent. But now we're going to get something that's not a fast forward merge. So back to the slides again. And what we're going to see is we're going to go back. And we're going to delete our hotfix. Get branch dash D hotfix. Don't need that branch anymore. We're yep. all done with it. We've mm -hmm. used it. And then we're going to check out story. You can see the asterisk down here on story. We're yep. going to get to that. And, whoops. And then we can continue working on our story. And then we're going to merge back from story into master. Yep. So and then this, we'll, we'll yep, see yep. these branchings kind of go together. So if you would, let's take a demo of what that hotfix scenario might look like. Yeah, so if we can, I'm just going to clear my screen. And All right, go back. Over here. Um, so what we have is, is essentially, um, uh, I'm just going to do a git kl again, right? Just to visualize it. I love using this to visualize it. We're on master. We can just ignore the rest and just say we're at master right now. This is the yep. most up to date version we have. In fact, what happens if you Oops. if you? Uh, Sorry about that. No, 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 you're good there. What happens if you delete issue twenty? If you delete that branch, does that whole branch then get merged over? What happens? What does the git k look like? When when, when I delete that? it, let's yeah. let's take a look. Oops. Just like that, and let's run it again. It just removes it. Yep. It, it just, just deletes the file, and that's all there is. That's all it is. So you notice that little blue dot that was right next to issue 20 is still there. Yep. All of the history is maintained in a single view when you're looking at git kl, even though that branch is no longer there. Why? Because branches aren't the important thing, it's commits that count. Yep. All right. Sorry, I just had to have nope, a little, little rant, great. wanted to that's focus great. back on there. Okay. So. Let's let's create a branch for Called. the feature and just kind of go to town on it. Yeah, so, sounds good. Git checkout dash b feature. What was the feature? Feature one. Feature one. Just like that, it creates the branch and switches to it. So what we're going to do here is um, I'm just going to say notepad index and go for it. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make some edits here, right? Just add some stuff. Um, Maybe add a new paragraph here saying, here's my second paragraph, just like that. Save it. Again, if we hit it, we can see that we've modified a file and we're, we're in a dirty state. Our working directory is in a dirty state. Yep. So let's add it. Wait. Oh, that's okay. What's that? Oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump in on a shortcut Go for at it. some point. Oh. No, no, once you're there, the, the AM shortcut. Oh, okay. I'll do that next time. Thanks. Not a problem. Yeah. yeah. So now we've had we have it we have it staged. Let's commit it. And it's been committed now. So if again we look at git k dash dash all to take a look at what it looks like, we now have feature one, and it's directly upstream from master. We can see that. Um, usually the display, if it is directly upstream, it'll be singular line, right, right there. We can see that one, one line from master to feature. 
All right. So this is when we get the call and we say, oh, no, there's a bug. Yep. There's James, a bug. there's a bug. There's a bug. <laughs> so we need to check out Master again. Get yeah, check out. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. And we now need to branch again for the bug. Yep. So git checkout dash b bug 53. And now we're there. So now we do some stuff here. Let's say notepad index. And let's change some stuff here, such as let's put a paragraph here saying. Hey, put it above it. Put it. No, oh, no, go ahead. Let's or, put, basically, I want to create a merge conflict. Oh, you're creating a merge conflict. Got yes. it. Yes. So what I want to do is create a merge conflict. We're going to go into that in a little bit, but I'm just setting it up as we go along. Perfect. Yeah. So this is where the merge conflict is going to happen. And right like that, save it and close it. But that was really our bug fix. So that's kind of that. Um, we come in here and we go ahead and say git. Add. Oh, well, uh, so git commit. Me. Git commit dash am. Just like that. Yep. And now this won't add any files. The important thing, it won't pick up new files, like a git add dash a will pick up new files. All it does is pick up the changes um, to files that are already tracked by git. So it's just a shortcut to help you. Uh, to help you not have to git add git commit each time if yeah. you're just modifying uh, files that are already tracked. Mm -hmm. Now, right. we, well, let's let's first take out the dash a and see what happens. Oh, so that's we, a good idea. If we try to commit it without first staging it, oh, nothing. Nothing to Nothing's go. Nothing's been staged. So let's go ahead and put that a in there. And that's been that's been added now. Now let's go ahead and take a look at git k one more time and see what it looks like. So we now have master sitting here. Feature one and bug fifty three have diverged, just like we have in in our in our demo that we were just looking at. Um, and now what we want to do is we want to say, okay, that that's the bug fix. Let's merge it into master. Yep. So check out master. Get check out master. <laughs> <laughs> get check out master. Now we're all located on the master branch, and all we have to do is just say get merge bug fifty three, just like that. And what we'll notice is since it was just directly upstream. Rather than doing a recursive merge or anything like that, it's just going to say, oh, it's, it's upstream. We're just going to push the pointer from pointing at this commit to the next commit. We're going to fast forward it. Absolutely. And you'll see that when I press enter, you actually see the words fast forward saying, we just fast forward it, file changed, and that's it. Yep. Makes it easy. All right. That's the bug fix. Now, we haven't talked about merging yet. We nope. still, we've talked about branching. Yep. Should we come back? We've got a discussion around merge in PowerPoint. I think we ought to go back to that. Yeah, let's go back so, to the PowerPoint. So let's pop, pop back to the PowerPoint again on my deck. And what we see is we've just finished the hotfix scenario, and we're going to talk about basic merging. Yep. Again, got some visualizations. Uh, the commit isn't directly upstream in this case. You, otherwise, you just fast forward. Yep. Um, so we would check out master and then merge it to story. Yeah, or, so we want to pull in story or get mass, get all the stuff in master up to story. So here's what it might look like. So what happens is we check out master, and we say we want to merge into we want to merge story into master. Um, so what it does is since they're on different lines, it'll go and find the common ancestor between the two, and then merge the two using the common ancestor as a point of reference, right? Rather than just saying diff these two and see if they see if they match or anything, or, or if there's any conflicts between the two. Yep. It's recursive. It will go back and find that ancestor. Now, if there's multiple ancestors, it'll actually pull the different ancestors and create a temporary ancestor that has changes from the ancestor. So there, there is a lot of magic that goes into the recursive, recursive merge in Git. And one of the things that, merge, that, that Git is very popular for is actually its very powerful merge interface. Yeah. It's got a lot of very interesting features that, that you can that makes merging easier than sometimes it is if you're using other version control systems. Mm -hmm. Totally. All right, so here we are. We're going to execute this merge to see what happens. And in this particular case, we in, it ends up with another commit, mm -hmm. um, another C6 in this case. It's a commit, and we've merged story. We're on master, merge story, and what happens? We're still on master, but now you see C6 in there, and it's got two parents. And this is where the commit with uh, the, the multiple references to a different commit means that it was merged using from two different two or more different commits. It's basically what we call a merge commit. Yep. Yep. So 
that gives us some interesting stuff. Now we're gonna delete the story branch. Yep. Because we don't need it anymore, and you'll see that history is still there. You see that little side branch. If you look at git k, it's always you know standing upright, but you see that branch come off. And it'll always be there. The yep. branch is just, I mean, that's part of its history. Yep. Even though it's not named anything anymore, it's still part of its history. Because the history is stored in the commits, not in branches. Yep. And that's, that's a little different feeling. Yeah. So you might run into a merge conflict. Um, and if you do, we're gonna show you how to merge it. There's a couple things. Um, I, I love when you merge without a merge tool in Git, because yes. it's, it's a crazy <laughs> manual crazy manual process, and you look at it and go, well, that's Makes quite, sense. quite cool. <laughs> yep. Makes sense if you, don't have a, if you don't have a merge tool. You will probably use a merge tool. Yep. If you're using Git from within Visual Studio, you just get a, a merge, merging tool and a merging mm -hmm. experience in Visual Studio. Um, but if not, you'll see kind of how that works. And it's interesting, because it actually injects stuff into text files, yep. meaning you probably wouldn't compile successfully. Mm -hmm. This is what a conflict's gonna look like. Yep. So James, what, where, what are these things? There's a, uh, less than signs, greater than signs, equal than signs? What's yeah, that? So, so essentially what's happening here is um, the, 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 the less than signs next to the head colon index.html is basically um, below this line, is what is located in the index.html field that is that my head's pointing to. So whichever branch I'm currently checked out with, um, that's what's th below this line is what's in it. Between that line and then the equal signs. So the equal signs will differentiate the two different branches that you're merging, um, and anything below the equal sign and before the 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 other angle bracket to the story colon index.html is what's in the story branch. So we can see that there is a difference between the two, um, and, and we can basically, we have to go in and manually change this and say, we want to just have this one or just have this one by deleting all the extra stuff, or we merge the two by bringing some of, the, some of each in. Right? Very manual in this case. Yeah, it's, it's, it really is just a manual process. That's what a conflict looks like. Let's take a look at the next piece. This is what res resolution, you go in, you manually edit the stuff, yep. and then... Note, you have to get rid of all the extra stuff, yes. right? Otherwise, it will still think it's in the merge state. Right. Yeah. That's a good point. Mm -hmm. And then use git add, and then git commit, and you're there. Yep. Yep. Let's demo a merge conflict. But first, before we get to a conflict, I'd like to go to my machine or stay on my machine and, and go back to this learn git, git branching piece and do qu uh, a quick reset and a clear and, and start over here and kind of replicate what you did with the story and the hotfix. So let's take a quick look at this. We're on master and we do a uh, git checkout dash b story one. So there we've got our story one. Uh, we do a git, uh, maybe a couple git commits on these. So we've got, we're doing some work on story. Ah! James' hair is on fire, he comes running in. <laughs> Here comes a bug. Here comes a bug. <laughs> uh, git checkout master, get back to master, where we have, we known, known good. Um, uh, how about G-I-T, <laughs> checkout master. Git checkout master, we're back up at master. And uh, git, Check out dash b bug 51. There we are. Git commit. Git commit. Get some get you know get some changes on this thing, right? <laughs> Understand what's happening in here. So our bugs all built out. We're ready now to get master up to the bug fix. We can get it to production real quickly. Let's go ahead and do that. Git checkout master. There I am again. Git checkout master. <laughs> I'll spell it right this time. <laughs> there we are. And then git merge bug 51. Zip. Fast forward. Fast Real forward easy. merge. Even says fast forwarding. That easy. Now, back to story one. Git check out story one. Did you merge your story back in? No, not you yet. You didn't yet. No. Okay, so I'm going to take that. I'm going to do another git commit. I'm going to finish working on this thing. And then I'm going to merge my story to master. Yep. Okay, so I could merge from here or I can merge from master. I want master to be the key thing here. So let's git, check out master, get back to master, git, merge, story one, boom. There's our C10 mm -hmm. that we have. Um, story one, don't need it anymore. Don't need bug 51 anymore. So we might do git branch and delete story one and do the same thing for bug 51. And there we go. And, and now we're, we're back to a clean state with the master branch. The master branch is clean. We don't have any... We created all these branches, but again, these branches are created locally, so we can create and delete them. 
Right, and if we push this up to the server, no one sees that those branches were created. Yep. They will see the paths yep. that we've drawn here. You'll see the paths. You'll see the history that You'll happens. see the history, because the history's in the commits. Yeah. But, all right, now let's see what that looks like in real life. Yeah. And so to do that, we're gonna go back to James' back machine. To my machine. Um, so here we have, let's just do a git case so we can see a view of it all again. So we have bug 53 sitting here with feature one. Bug 53 is kind of done. We fixed it, master's already up to date. So let's go ahead and delete bug 53 and then switch back to feature one and start finishing up feature one. So I get branch, uh, delete, oops, uh, bug 53, that deleted it just like that. And let's go ahead and check out uh, feature one. Just like that. All right, so let's go ahead and open up um, fun.html uh, and let's say I want to get rid of this line and maybe get rid of that, save it, um, git dash commit, or let's do a git commit, the, the adding the adding it, staging it as well as putting a message in all at the same time, right? The things that you shouldn't be doing, but do as we say, not as we do. <laughs> Just like that, we have that. And if we look at, if, we've, if we were to go look back at git k, we would see that feature one is got two commits and master's over here. So let's go ahead and switch back to master, git checkout master, and we wanna merge feature one into master. So we just go ahead and say git merge feature one. And we can see that we have some conflicts, right? So if we go ahead and say git status. How do you know there's a conflict? So we can see a conflict right here where it says conflict yep. content merge conflict in index.html. Perfect. Um, basically what happens is it will try to do an automatic merge, but if it finds a conflict, it'll, it'll scream it out and say conflict. Um, when that happens, the, the workflow is basically, it keeps it un, unstaged. So it's in the modified state. So we can see that fun was merged without any issues. So it's been staged and it's been modified, but index.html has still been unstaged, right? It's been modified, but it still needs to be cleaned up before we can continue. So what we need to do is just say notepad, oops, notepad index.html. And note, if you had a diff tool or a merge tool, um, sorry, a merge tool already set for this, it'll actually pop the merge tool up rather than being in this weird state, right? Um, but we can see here that we have these we have what we have, we have the merge issue right here, right? We have head, and this is what was in the head, which is master because that's what we have checked out. Um, and this is what was in feature one. Here's my second paragraph. Let's say I just wanna create, I just wanna keep both of them. So to do that, I just get rid of this, this line, get rid of this line, and I get rid of this line. Go ahead and save it, and ta-da, just like that. Now we just say git add index. And ta-da, we're done. We're ready to check in that, or commit that merge. So we just go ahead and say, git commit. And this, if I say just git commit rather than dash m, I kind of want to show this because we haven't shown it yet. Um, but what it'll do is it'll go in here. Um, this is VI because this is my default, default editor. I didn't, I switched it away from notepad. Um, and if we do a merge, it will automatically put some stuff in here. But this is where you actually do uh, your merge messages or your your commit messages, that sort of thing. Uh, and when you're done, you just go ahead, write it out, and you're good to go. Now, let's take a look at git k dash dash all one more time. What we have here is, this is our feature branch right here onto the right. Um, and this is where we we branched off and we worked on the feature while while master had its own bug fix, right? This is the, this is the, the bug fix right here. We can see that that's in the history of it right there. Um, and then when we did the merge from we merged feature into master, um, it created a new commit with two parents, and that's what we call a merge commit. Um, now that we're done with feature one, we don't wanna push it, right, because that was just our local branch that we used to develop on feature one. So we can go ahead and delete it and then push master. So um, git branch d dash d uh, feature one, just like that, and now that's gone, and we say git push uh, origin, just like that. And ta-da, just like that, we have it, we have it uploaded. So one way, uh, there's a couple ways to note that it, it was pushed and you're, you're currently on the right, right version as your public 
repository. Um, if you're using Poshkit, you have the different colors with uh, the master branch here. So green is we're not quite in sync. Um, this teal is we are. And if we go to git k dash dash all one more time, we can see that the remote version of master, which is our origin, is pointing to the same commit that we're pointing to. Um, and when we get to remotes, we'll see that that is the, the, the second location. That, that origin master branch is pointing to the same commit we are. So we've pushed it. And that's all it does is it moves the master branch to a different commit. That's all it is. Anything to add, Steve? Nope, that's perfect. Awesome. All right, let's head back to the slides and we'll yeah. get, to get it on the next part. So as we move back to my machine and looking at the slides, just hit a merge conflict. Now we're going to talk about remote branches. Yep. Um, have we done enough with branching and merging that we're ready to talk about remotes? You did a git push origin. I did a git push origin. OK. I think we're ready. You know what? We're not ready. OK. And here's why we're not ready. Um, I haven't shown it in Visual Studio yet. I know we've got a yeah. section on Visual Studio coming up. I'm cannibalizing some of that sections. Unfairly a little bit, but, <laughs> but rather than just talk about Visual Studio, I think it's okay if we talk about branching here as well. Yeah. So let's jump back and so talk too. a little bit about branching, um, and, and I'm going to be doing it inside of the concept, context of Visual Studio. So if I'm in here, and I might have my, uh, my master branch, um, I've got uncommitted changes here in Foo. Let me make sure I, I go view those changes and say removed French. Let me commit all of my changes. Now, I've got branches here, and I can see my branches by taking a look here. I've got two branches, foo and master, and I'm currently on the foo branch. I can switch over, if I like, to the master branch. I simply double click it. And on the master branch, I made a copy of button, button one here, and it says um, message box Guten Tag Welt. It's the same German one. If we look at the form one design, it's got a button three on it. Yep. Right? And there it is, button three, show Guten Tag Welt, et cetera. That's master. Foo, I've gone ahead and deleted that, and I can just click over here to foo, and it does the same thing as it does inside of the directory structure that you showed. It just brings me back to where I was before. Mm -hmm. My design, I've got nothing. Yep. And when I look at the form, there's nothing here. So I have this, this master branch. Now, if I want to create a new master to add French, for instance, for instance I can just go up here. Let me go. Um, into master to do so, and I'm going to say a new branch called French, and we'll make a, a new branch called French. From here, notice it's an unpublished branch. This means it's a local branch. That means it's not up on the server. I haven't pushed this up to VSO at this mm -hmm. point in time, which I probably never will. Yeah. Uh, this one I'm just making it French. Makes sense. Foo, I actually pushed up there just to show that it could be pushed. We're going to ignore that for now. But I'm going to go into my French branch, which I'm currently in. You can see at the top here it says French. And uh, Guten Tag Welt, we'll change that to Bonjour, what is it, Le Monde? Oh, pardon me, anyone from a French speaking country for, <laughs> for misspellings and mispronunciations. Um, form one design, let's make sure we can take a look at. Uh, the properties here and change that to the French language. Save it. I think we're good there. Now we can take a look. We have we are in the French one. We're in branches. Let's look at our changes. And here you can see we have some changes. Let's commit those. Add French language support and commit. So basically, we've now committed that thing. I can sync it with the server, but don't do that. This is a local branch. I'm still in French. I'm kind of living in this, in this language. I can now go, however, to take a look at my branches again. This will show me all of my branches. Mm -hmm. Now, I think I'm ready. I've got my changes. I think the French is ready to go. So I want to go back to master and then merge that. Well, let's. I want to go from master to there. This is one of those things where there is a, there's a, a kind of a difference in uh, um, philosophy or just the, the way it is. If I'm, if I'm in French, if I'm in the French one and I want to merge, let me uh, close my merge. If I'm in my French branch and I hit merge, it leaves French over here. 
Mm -hmm. It does this correctly in that I need to go from master to French. Yep, because but it you're kinda, merging master I'm into French. I'm moving Frenchers. master into French. So it, it assumes for me, and I think wisely, yep. that I want to get my French stuff shoved into master. So it puts French on the right-hand side like it should. Mm -hmm. So my source, I want master to get up to French, merge. Already up to date, a forward merge. Or is this one where it's totally different? Let me go back to master. Because Foo already had master's changes N in Foo. N it, Foo's not there. So let me go back to merge and go from... Or French, sorry. Sorry, French, yeah. French. You want to bring French's changes into master. Yeah. And that's where the semantics get. That's kind of where the semantics are completely different. <laughs> so this is where you get a little bit of a weirdism yep. going from individual studio. Maybe we should have kept it out for a moment. <laughs> uh, the idea here, however, is that this is why we say learn Git fundamentals underneath, because there's some things that just don't that feel a little bit different yep. um, when you're working inside of here. But where repository is updated, our master now includes the French. Mm -hmm. Now I can take my unpublished branch and delete it. Now, somebody asked a question in the Q&A panel that said, is it bad to not delete your branches? And the answer is, nah. You can leave them out hanging around all you like. Um, when you're doing push to origin and those, your branches don't go. Mm -hmm. uh, your history does all the commits, but not your branch labels, mm -hmm. unless you specifically are pushing a branch up somewhere. Mm -hmm. And we'll see that in a bit as well. But one, for now. But one thing to, with that as well is if you leave your branches around, right? If you type git branch, which just lists all your branches, you're going to see a huge list of branches rather than, you know, anything that's current or up to date yeah. or whatever you're working on, right? I, I, I would keep yeah. it clean. I think it's a really good idea to keep it clean. There's nothing that's going to like break git or yes. anything like yes. that. You can have a million branches. It's, again, they're just files. Yep. A million branches would be 40 million bytes. That's not that much, <laughs> right? So, but uh, yeah, I, I'd keep it clean just so you don't have to see so much stuff. Yeah. So that's how you would do the same sort of thing once you're inside of Visual Studio. Yeah. So just that kind of merge out, branch back. I'll, I'll keep coming back to Visual Studio, even though I think that will make for a, a shorter Visual Studio session. Mm -hmm. I think that's, that's okay. Yeah, I think it's okay because it kind of it, it ties us in. Now mm -hmm. we've we've still got a ways to go, um, and yeah. I know we're I know we're going long on here, um, but what we've got left to do is remote branches. We're going to stop at remote branches, mm -hmm. and then uh, and later on we'll come back. Um, after the break, and we'll introduce some other interesting things as well. Yep. So let's get get on with remote branches. Yep. And uh, I, here we are. Now, we a branch that's remote means it's just a, it's a reference to a different repo. So we have origin that we went and got right, um, and they. When, you, when Origin has master, it gets pulled down. It's got its own master. That I call it Origin, the one we pulled from VSO. And it's down, and it's on our repo at this point. Now, we can't move those branches. Yep. But it's important to note that they're a local branch. They're just a local file, but it just happens to be pointing to something else. Yeah, I'm going to turn it over to James for probably a better explanation. It, it's somewhat like you can think of it as a, as a read-only branch. It's basically where uh, that remote repository has its current branch, what, what commit that current, its branch is pointing at, right? So um, if, I, if I were to do two changes on master without pushing, the origin, the master, the, the origin's master branch would be pointing at the commit that's two commits back, whereas my local master branch would be pointing at the most recent commit, right? So if I wanted to move the origin master's branch to point to the same commit, I'd have to push that up, right? And that would, that would fast forward that up. Um, so that's that's how that's what a remote branch is. It's basically just another branch file, but it's read only, and it's just telling you where um, a, a public repository's master or public branch is sitting at. Good. Mm -hmm. So um, another thing with these remote branches is uh, they take the form of remote slash branch. So we haven't really gotten into if I wanted to have multiple remotes of my repository, as in, let's say Steve had his own his own public repository that he published to, um, I could add his public repository as another remote and have two different remotes that I'm pulling and pushing changes to, right? Um, so there's that, they, they come in the form as remote slash branch. Um, and then you can have these things called tracking branches, which is a local branch that is tracking a remote branch, such as my local master branch is most likely going to be tracking the origins master branch. Um, the cool thing about that is you can mismatch the names, right? So I can have like a, a local M branch because I know Steve likes to use only one letters for everything. <laughs> <laughs> and that points to my master branch or tracks my master branch on the origin. 
Good. So I think that's, again, will show up uh, pretty well once we get to some demonstrations. Here's an example. We've cloned a repo down. And when this is the, the, the repo on git.nwc.com or some, some location. Yep. And there it is. We've got our repo, and it's got a master branch in it. Because our remote repo is just a repo like any other repo. I mean, it just happens to be hosted at some place yep. we consider to be our golden repository or our blessed repository. Mm -hmm. But it's just a repo. So it's out there as just a repo. It's got a master branch. Now when I clone from that and pull it down, you'll see on my computer I have my own master that it's created for me. When, yep. I, when I did the git, when I did the git clone, it pulls it down, puts it at the end, it basically duplicates the master, and it's got another one called origin master. Now here's the thing that, will, that it frustrates people sometimes. <laughs> origin master is a label I mean, is a branch on my local machine. It just happens to be an, an uh, immovable mm -hmm. branch. It just, it's a pointer to But just remember, where it a, is. a branch on my local machine is just a file on my local machine. That's <laughs> yeah. all it is. And Origin That's Master. That's all it is. <laughs> is just that file. Yep. So we've got Origin Master. Now, we're, um, we're going to have somebody else go out and do a bunch of commits and push them out to the server. So back out at the website here on our project, we've got two new commits. Notice master has now moved. What does that do? When we take a look at our commits, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to commit twice. Yep. Look, my master has now moved beyond origin master. And note here that this is... I, we haven't talked to the server. We haven't had. We've had zero communication with the with the actual public repository. So when we when Steve pushes two commits to my local master, we don't see those other commits that were pushed to the origin. Right. Yeah. So the, the, yeah, this is my local one. We've seen nothing on the origin, nothing of the of the sort. However, when we do a git fetch origin, now this is the difference. You you yep. alluded to it earlier, yep. but git fetch says. I'm going to eventually want to push something off to the server, go get everything, all of the history, so I can make sure all of the history merges, all the stuff happens locally, so I can get the full history locally before I go out and do a push. Yep. Mm -hmm. So I do that, that, that git fetch origin, and that pulls it down. Again, it doesn't have to be origin, it can be any remote, but I'm going to pull git fetch origin, that's going to pull it down, and there it sits. Mm -hmm. And I know some people, when they first learn about this, they kind of get freaked out saying, oh, is that going to mess up my, you know, my whatever I just did? But remember that when you do a git fetch, it only pulls it into the repository, not your working directory. Yep. Uh, and they're all unique commits, right? They're all hashed um, and very singular. So we don't have to, doing a fetch does nothing to us except get the history that's on the server that's, yep. that hasn't been synced up with my local computer. That's perfectly right. So now we've got, we've got our, our origin. It's just those commits, basically, it's pulled those commits down locally. Yeah. That's what it's done, basically. It's pulled those commits down locally, so now I have access to them, and it's moved the origin slash master up to where master was on origin. Yep. And again, I, we said it wasn't a movable branch. It's movable when you do a git fetch, a git pull, mm -hmm. those sorts of things. Mm -hmm. So that gets us to a singular example. Yep. Now, if we did a git, we could do a, a git Ooh. pull origin, it would actually execute a merge. Yes, yes. And so one thing to note here, too, is that we see origin. That is our remote name. So when we do a clone, on when we do a git clone from some repository, some public repository, it automatically names that public repository as origin. Um, when we start talking about multiple remotes, we will have to name them different things. And you can even name that original remote as something other than origin. That's uh -huh. just the default, right? So when you see origin master, that's remote slash branch name, right? Yep. And origin is always going to be the one that you cloned from. All right. Now, we might have multiple remotes this might be a little bit more complicated. Because now, <laughs> we're not talking about that singular remote. Um, in Git, the examples we've done so far, we have a remote, a local repository, and a connection between them. Yep. But you can have a remote here, and another remote, and a uh, local repository. So local repository can po point to two. Which now it gets confusing because anytime we do a git fetch, it's going to pull the changes from this repository. And a git fetch over here will pull the changes from this repository. They have to have different names, yep. obviously. You can't mm -hmm. have them both origin. But here we have our origin master and we have our team one 
Master, as you see in the lower right. Yep. And they might have, you know, it looks like they've got historical 66B851 was a uh, definitely a, uh, a shared ancestor. There's been two commits on Master, and then oh, looks sorry, looks like eight two eight two one eight five five is the is yep. the one. So so it's the Team One Master is one behind the Origin. Yep, master. and I think that's good to start noting that it's one commit behind because when we start thinking about how far ahead or behind we are. Um, there's there's the, the branches page on Visual Studio Online that shows how far ahead a branch is or how far behind a branch is. So when we look at this specific example, Team 1 is one commit behind. And, yeah. and, and so that also makes Origin one commit ahead. That's a great way to think of it. Yep. So now we want to incorporate the Team 1's repo. <laughs> okay, first thing we need to do. James. We go ahead and add the repo, or add the remote. But, and by doing that, we just say git remote add. Um, we give the location of it, and then we, it, it, or, or sorry, we give it the name, and then where that is located, right? Um, since we're just using HTTP as the protocol, but you could use SSH, git, file, whatever you want, as long as it's publicly accessible. Um, and then you just run a git fetch, right? Rather than merging those changes in, we just say run git fetch. And what that does is that brings down the, the remote branch to our local machine. So we see on my computer, we now have two remote branches, team one slash master and origin slash master, right? And that's where the different naming of the, of the remotes come into play, right? We have three master branches sitting on my local machine, but one's my local master branch, one's my team one's master branch, and one's my origin's master branch. That sounds good. Yeah. To push a branch, how do you get a branch now up to the server itself? Mm -hmm. And why would you push a branch? We've talked about doing all this branching stuff locally and then pushing up to master. Why would you ever push a branch up? So maybe we should talk a little bit about that. Why would you push a branch? There are a lot of different reasons why you could push a branch, depending on what, what your, your team's workflow is, how you contribute to your own, your, your own project, that sort of stuff, right? Um, a lot of times people will create what we call topic branches. So they'll create a branch like we saw for issue, issue 20 or feature one or something like that. Um, they'll work on it and sometimes they'll just, they'll just push that branch up and then whoever's job it is to integrate that into the master will just say, okay, merge that into master and push it back up, right? Um, so that's one reason to push a branch. Um, another is, let's say Steve and I want to work on a specific feature or bug fix together. We may want to push a branch so that we can collaborate off, -side of, off of the master branch as well. That's perfect. That's a great, great mm -hmm. idea. So just like you would use a team foundation server version control branch, a TFVC branch. There might be a branch on the server. We both work on it together. Once we're done, then we're going to merge it up into the into into master. Yep. But meanwhile, we don't want it in master yet because it might take us a while to work on it. But we do want to share that branch. Now, the other way to share it is if we happen to be on the same network. I just shoot it your direction. You know, I just use a file and and branch directly from you. Yep. I mean, uh, a clone from you, and then I can pass and forth back. You know, yep. Pass stuff over. Um, however, eh, it's a little awkward at times. It's yeah. now on two machines. Generally, people don't do that. Uh, the other way they might do it is to create a separate remote repository. So Team 1, for instance, we could take, create a whole separate repository, and then James and I could collaborate on that repo, and then eventually push everything into master. Mm -hmm. Most common, and we'll see this when we get to the workflow area, most commonly, instead of that, you're going to be doing a, uh, a branch that you push up to the origin yep. and deal with it there, or up to whatever the blessed repository is. Mm -hmm. So pushing a branch, here we've got master, we've got a good idea, a really good idea that we want to share with people. And we just say git push master, or git push um, origin good idea. Mm -hmm. it's, the, uh, it's the remote and the branch. Git push origin good idea. And our branch then appears on the server. Yep. And the good idea is now there. And something to note here as well is that it now becomes a tracking branch, right? Because good idea locally is now tracking good idea on the, the, on the public repository as well, right? So it's important to know what, what's just a local branch and what is a, a, a tracking branch, right? Which branches are tracking a remote branch as well? Right, so by tracking that remote branch, it means that we can push directly from good idea into the good idea branch up yep. on the server. Um, we can do a git fetch, a git pull, mm -hmm. and come just from that good idea area. 
Yep. So that's a common way to do it. So in general, if you're working on short, quick cycles things, you'll often work right on master. Take a branch, do some stuff, commit to master, push. Um, if you're working on longer term things, you might be living in a branch called Good Idea, for instance, and you live in that branch for a while and then gradually commit, 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 and you'll take branches off Good Idea that are local, and swim off that, and then eventually, when Good Idea is done, you'll merge everything in. Yep. So it kind of depends on the length of time that you're going to run that branch. It's just a way to store branches up on the server so you don't lose them. All right, so tracking branches, you just mentioned this. Let's dive into it a little bit more, James. Yeah, yeah. so they're just, it's a direct relationship between a local and remote, right? So when, you do, when you're sitting on a branch itself and you say, get push, it knows where to push it to, right? If I'm tracking this branch, it just pushes to it automatically. Um, and the git push, the git pull will automatically merge it into that branch as well. So if I say um, git pull from origin or git pull from team one or Steve's public repository, um, for this specific branch, it'll pull it in and merge it into that branch because it knows that my local branch is tied to that remote branch, right? Right. Um, it, it, during a clone, let's say there's three or four branches sitting on a, a local or a public repository and we clone that repository, by default, it will only pull down a master tracking branch, which can be pretty confusing sometimes. Mm -hmm. And depending on the tool, there's a lot of clients out there which that will actually pull all the branches down and create all a local tracking branch for every single one of those. And there's some clients that will just pull the master branch down. It really kind of depends. But if you do want to track it, you've got a command line, and that command line is just basically git checkout dash b, your branch name, and then the remote slash branch, and then it'll create that tracking branch for you. Yep. Whew, demo. Now, I want to caution you. I don't want to go too deep in this demo. Yes. Don't let it go too far, James, because I want to come back when we talk about VSO and TFS and Visual Studio. A good chunk of that presentation is going to be around how do we set up remote branches, how do we move things around, how do we take history from something maybe like GitHub and move it over, or how do we take a, brand, a, a repo and, 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 and move keep it. two things in sync. Yeah. So we're going to be doing more when we get to that section, so I'm not going to let you go too far down I'm, the road. I think I'm branch. just going to add a, add a remote and just see what it looks like in Git K. Perfect. Perfect. All right. So if, if we go to my machine, so we know that this demo is connected to um, a remote on VSO, right? So if we just type Git remote, we'll see that. It, uh, do you remember how to see all of it? Um, Git remote um, dash V for verbose. Thank you. Dash V. There we go. So we can see that these are our remotes, and we can see that we have permission to both fetch from it as well as push to it, right? Um, so origin is connected to these two. So what I'm going to do is just go ahead and just create a quick, just create a, a, uh, a, a empty repo. Okay. Add it as a remote and push to it, right? So I'm just going to go to version control. Secondary demo, ta-da, done. Refresh this page so that I can get that secondary demo's URL. <laughs> There's my secondary demo, and here's my URL. So we can actually see here, it actually tells us, do we want to clone this, 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 this Empty repository, repo? yeah. or do we want to just add it as a remote and push to it, right? So we actually have the command right here. We can just go ahead and copy and paste. And just like that, remote. Oh, oh you got to change the I got to change origin. <laughs> <laughs> and say secondary. And now if we say git remote dash v, we now have two remotes. We have origin and secondary. And if we just say git remote, there's origin and secondary just like that. Yep. So now what we want to do is we want to say git push and again, I just want to push back here. It actually has it right here, git push dash u origin all. And let's change that from origin to secondary. Yep. And, and, and the uh, dash all in this case, dash u, what this is saying is we just want to get all of our history up there, all of our, uh, all of our uh, um, labels, all yep. that kind of stuff. Everything. We just want kind of everything up there. Yep. Go ahead and do that. And remember, before we, be, before we refresh this, this is a completely empty repository, right? We have nothing in here. Um, and that's why it's saying we need to push something in here. There's literally, there's no, there's no master branch. There's, there's, there's nothing. no nothing. Literally it's completely, completely empty. empty. So what we see here is we see that it does some compression, um, pushes those objects back up there, um, and it actually creates another tracking branch. You can see here that we have a new branch, master, master. 
Um, what that means is if we hit git k dash dash all, we can see how we have our master branch, we have our origin master branch, and our secondary master branch, and they're all pointing to the same commit, right? And so this is where you start seeing those remote branches um, pointing at certain commits locally. Um, now, if we head back again to Visual Studio and we refresh this page, we actually get those. And not only, the, and this is the coolest part, is that if we go to history here and let it load, we get all of the different changes that we had earlier, right? It brings all those changes, history, everything, all into it. So if you've ever had to migrate history from Team Foundation version control to Team Foundation version control using something <laughs> like the integration platform, ouch. Um, here, it's just, oh, all right, just Add a remote and push, push to it. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, all done. Yep. History's there. So that, 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 that way of pushing to both of those keeps us now, we've got two, um, two remotes that we can deal with and push back and forth. So what you're going to find is this is commonly used for, um, let's say you have an open source project, and that open source project um, is out there and you've got a lot of people working on it, and maybe you have it hosted out at CodePlex or something, and everyone's kind of ch chunking away at it, and then you've got your, your, your premium model where you've added some features, you've added some things that you are building and selling. So you want the open source for, for the 90% solution, but then mm -hmm. you want to provide some extra features. Well, you are sitting here working in the middle um, against my full featured repository. But what you can do is you can constantly be pulling ideas from the open source repo, integrating them into your branch, and making sure that those changes are going into your, um, your premium one that you're selling. So that would be an example of why yep. you would want two remotes. You, know, you connect to your open source one, you connect to your internal one that's got extra stuff. And you just always come from the open source into the 4Pay model to keep it up to date, and you don't go back out the other way. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Let's do a quick time check. If we can cast back, where are we? Where are we at in terms of time? One hour, twelve minutes. One hour, twelve minutes. I fear we're going to have to wrap it yep. um, on this one. We've got a rebasing section, which is a special yes. kind of merge, but luckily it fits in later, and we'll just yeah. go ahead and we'll plug it in later. later. Yep. So thank you very much for this module on branching. We're going to come back in, answer some more questions. Huge thanks to Sachi, who's been really yeah. carrying the weight to that. Thanks, Sachi, and, and all the other <laughs> folks in here. And uh, we'll see you in uh, 10 minutes. Mm -hmm.